right, today I am doing a video on these Kisaki killifish that I just picked up. Uh, right away I have to warn you that um, this is not the tank they're going to be in. This is just for a quick quarantine as my other quarantine tanks are all full. Uh, these guys definitely need a larger tank than this. But uh, for now I have them in this with a light, a fully um, cycled filter. We'll hang on the back the sponge on it um, and the heater in there as well so these Kisaki killifish are also known uh, by their scientific name of uh, Nothobrachius uh, flamicomantis flamicomantis sorry uh, they're from like West Africa uh, which most Nothobrachius are as you can see the males he's actually pretty hungry right now kind of freaking out he's much calmer earlier the males have all the color as with most killifish and a lot of different species of fish, the females more silver and plain and smaller. Um, these are annual killifish, which uh, means unfortunately they only live about a year or two. And um, they like, uh, usually you'd keep a pair in about a 10 gallon. You could keep a couple more in there with them and uh, maybe some other fish because they're pretty peaceful. But if you're gonna have more than one male, you should probably have a 20 gallon or so because the males can get very territorial against each other. Um, they like to eat um, all kinds of stuff like uh, worm, black worms, uh, frozen blood worms. Um, tank raised ones will go to pellet food quite easily. And um, I'm actually adding some medication to speed up the process of um, quarantining these guys because I don't feel comfortable keeping them in a smaller tank. It's only a couple gallons. Um, I keep a net on the top so they can't jump out, as most killifish are quite the jumpers. Uh, they like around a they like a softer water around a six to six point five pH. Uh, they like to have the temperature around seventy to eighty degrees. Uh, let's see what else. Once I get them into their uh, the tank they're going to spend their life in, I'm going to probably put some peat or a bit of kind of mud on the bottom so that uh, to kind of mimic their natural surroundings. They're normally found in little kind of puddles and pools around. Uh, so you want to have peat for them to, um, or moss for them to lay their eggs in. The male will squeeze the female against a hard surface to squeeze out the eggs and his sperm. And hundreds of eggs will come out and they'll kind of get buried a bit. At that time you would um, take out the peat and not fully dry it out but uh, let it just get a bit damp and then put it in a, uh, an airtight container to keep it at that amount of moisture. And um, that's to repli replicate the drought that normally happens when they die out and then their eggs would uh, hatch the next uh, rainy season so you'd want to keep them like that for about three months and then uh, reintroduce them to water and then you'd have uh, the next uh, batch of fry let's see oh and also with the um, eggs they do what's called diapause where not all the eggs will hatch the first time around so after a week you might want to take the peat back out um, dry it and then um, try it again so that they do that so that in nature if you know it rains once and then dries right up away that not all the eggs will have hatched and be ruined well I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and um, I'll go ahead and put an update when I get them into their full size tank and show you what their surroundings look like. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.